hey guys good morning today i'm going to be showing you guys what i do in a day during this period you know of isolation and all that what i really do in a day so usually i wake up around past six to seven and i get into my workout clothes and then after that i go on ig live to do a live workout so yeah before i was doing it on whatsapp with a friend of mine but i decided to do it on ig live because people have been asking to join so yeah um i've now doing i'm now doing an ig live i'll soon be going over to my um other channel you guys know i have a weight loss channel the only reason why i have not posted um since i posted once but the reason i'm not posted since is i want to make some progress so that i can have something to be telling you guys i don't just come there and be blabbing okay i'm just to have something to tell you guys okay so if you're not following me on my weight loss channel it's called a daisy join let me know what the weight loss channel i beg is a fitness channel a health and fitness channel okay it's not only about weight loss so yeah um i'm going to be posting updates there and then i might be doing live workouts there too because i saw that means and zang that um also open another channel to be doing live workouts. I, was like, I was just like okay if we can do live workouts on youtube then it's fine so that people on youtube who are not following me but you should be following me on instagram Shia. that one is why are you not following me on instagram why what that is to you <laughs> yeah so if you're not following me on instagram please go and follow me i do live workouts there i'm also going to start doing them here on youtube on my second channel so also go and follow my second channel anyway so i've rambled enough um it's time for me to start the workout and yeah i'll see you guys after i'm done okay yeah done my workout but for some reason my IG life just went off just ended and I didn't end it so I don't know what it is maybe it's just God that is saving me from killing myself <laughs> because my chest feels like it wants to explode I usually skip 1000 in the morning but today I was only able to skip 600 before this thing turned off I wanted to continue but I just said you know what everything happens for a reason <laughs> I know this is, an, this is just an excuse but see everything happens for a reason like I got tired so we're going to resume on Monday, not to, I don't do. I won't be doing on weekend so that my body will have time to heal and to rest, you know, from all the exercise during the week. So I'm also going to do, I'm just going to do Mondays to Friday, and I do 7 a.m. But I'm thinking I might just start doing it by 8 a.m. Maybe 7 a.m. 7 a.m. is too early. So if you're interested in joining me, then like I said, follow me on Instagram and on my weight loss channel at this journey. Okay. So yeah. I'm um, not done with my workout. Let me just stretch a little bit and then I'm gonna take my bath and get ready for the day. Funny enough, when you're walking out there, it feels like, to, it feels like your heart wants to explode. But whenever I'm done, I always like it. So, yeah, I always look forward to when I'm done. <laughs> okay, I look forward to when I'm done. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me just do some stretches and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I said I was going to have my bath after I was done stretching. I finished stretching now, but my kids are in my bed. They came there in the night. Normally I usually chase them away or I try to chase them back to their room in the night when they come to meet me. But to be honest, I'm a little bit more comfortable. I don't mind sleeping alone or I like sleeping alone, but I'm a little bit more comfortable when my kids are there and yeah it's just the way i am normally i wake up several times in the night to go and check on them in their room so um do you know you guys <laughs> i actually wake up in the night to check on my husband who's sleeping beside me yes i wake up i check if he's cold i check if there's mosquito biting <laughs> i check if he's cold i check if there's mosquito biting him or if he's not sleeping properly i'll tell him to change his position so i do the same thing for my kids i always go like at least three times in the night I just go peep into their room, check on them, check if they are covered well, or if the each room is if the weather is hot, like if maybe they've taken light and it's just fun, then I remove the covers from their body. I check if mosquito is biting them. 
<laughs> it's just something that I I I don't know. I just like to I even do this for my marriage too, so it's not as if anything. Anyway, yeah, so they came to my bed last night and it's easier for me when they are in my bed because I don't need to stand up and go over to their room to go check on them. I'll just turn and you know and check and then all of us share a blanket. So, you know, yeah, that's it. But anyway, so yeah, they're in my bed now. I don't even know that I should just go. If I enter that room, Eva especially will wake up. And I'm not sure I'm ready to deal with them this morning. So let me just go and get more water and drink while I wait. I'll just probably read my Bible while I wait or something. Yeah. Alright guys, so I'm done having my bath. Um you want to take that one? Yes. Uh, don't worry, you take it, okay? Let my actually come. Um, the kids have had their baths. They are about to have breakfast. They are eating Indomie this morning. And I'm finally losing my hair. But it looks terrible. So I just covered this with this um, you know, scarf or cap or whatever this is. And this is my new workspace. So this couch. This is my laptop. That's my earphone, that's my phone. I have my charger and stuff there. So this is my new workspace. And that's because anytime I go and work in my office, that's when one person will be crying, one person will be screaming, and I'll just be distracted. So I decided to start working on this chair. So I'll be seeing what is going on. Like then this is their naughty corner. Here beside me is their naughty corner. So when anybody disturbs me, I just send them to this naughty corner behind me. And you know they'll start begging and all that. So yeah, um I'm actually I just finished um editing a video so i'm uploading a video for today um is the q and a i asked about uh, marriage and stuff like that so um I'm just, trying, I'm just going to do some work here try and upload the video and also edit my you know video for the next day you guys know that i'm doing one video a day for this week and that's been hectic but we'll survive so i'm going to edit my video for the next day and yeah so that's it so that's what i'm going to be doing that's all i'm doing for now today i'm going to moisturize this children's hair now that we are on break, it's an opportunity for me to just let their hair rest. So I, I don't mind let their hair that much. I only just moisturize. I don't even use comb. Like since this break now, I've not used comb on their head. I just moisturize it with my hand and detangle it with my fingers. So I'm going to do that today also. And then I might go out because they need them. They don't have their beans. They have beans, but they don't have cooked beans. So I need to buy potato and plantain. Um, you guys have seen the recipe for their beans. If you've not seen it, then I'll put the recipe somewhere. I'm going to link it up somewhere. So I cook very delicious beans for them. So I need to get potato and plantain for their beans. But even if I don't get it, so eat something else. I beg because I cannot suffer myself this weekend. I just want to rest. Come, come. Turn my wait. Okay, you want to do my video? <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. Don't do, don't do, don't do, don't come my video. Don't, don't come my video. So, guys, I want to moisturize her hair now. Um, the hair is actually it actually feels moisturized, so I'm just going to spray water and put a little bit of detangler and just pack it back because the hair is still. Oily, eh? Yeah, I do my video. So yeah, I'm going to use spray water and just a little bit of deep um, leave-in conditioner because I noticed that her hair is still oily from the last time I moisturized, which was like three days ago. Or so, so it doesn't really need that much um, product. So, but it needs water, and I need to brush it and make it look better. See your long hair. Mommy. Mm -hmm. Mommy, I have long hair. Yes, don't worry. I'll show them your long hair too, okay? Okay. One, I'm going to do a video of how I take care of their hair, how I was able to grow their hair. Um, you know, Eva actually has very long hair for her age. It's because it's natural that it looks this way. So, yeah, I'm going to do a video about that. So, stay tuned. Alright, so I'm just going to quickly moisturize her hair and then I'll move over to Cora's own, okay? So, yeah. So I'm doing braids on their hair instead of twists because twists don't last at all. In fact, while they are twisting it. In fact, while they are twisting it, the hair will just be unraveling. So I do just uh, braids on it. Baby, wait now. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, I knew she was going to give up. I have wait. Oh? I want bread. You want bread? I'm going to give her bread. Any bread she wants, give her sharp, sharp. Is there only bread you want? I 
my own. Yes, and so beautiful. Eva, come and show everybody your beautiful hair. <gasps> wow, everybody's seeing your potty too. Yes, you want to show everybody your hair? Oh, yeah, look, look. Mommy, don't forget this. Eva needs to wear it. Uh, the crown? Yes, the princess crown. No, she will not wear a crown. She's at home. And I put some good accessories on her hair. <laughs> Come now, let me show you your hair. No. Alright, so you guys, I'm done with her hair. You can see that the hair is not that neat. Let me show them. Turn your back. Wait now, wait now. You can see that the hair is not that neat, but the hair is moisturized. No, turn your front. I like that hair. Turn your front. The hair is moisturized and looking pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you like your hair? <laughs> So I'm going to show you guys how I released, I'm going to do a dedicated video and show you from birth to their age now, the steps I did to make sure that their hair remains, you know, healthy and beautiful, okay? Nobody should tell me it's jeans, okay? Nobody should tell people, some people like to argue that it's genetics, it's, it's, just, it's not jeans, okay? Jeans have something to do with it, maybe like 5 or 10% to do with how healthy your hair is. The rest depends on care. Mom, uh, yeah, I did for me. Okay. Alright guys, so you know how I said that um, Eva's hair was very oily and I didn't need to do much on her hair. Cora's hair is actually really dry. Not too bad, but it's dry compared to Eva's hair. And I moisturized their hair the last time on the same day. So that just shows you that there's, they, there's a difference in hair texture and you know how to care for different kind of hair texture. Even though I do pretty much the same thing for both of them, but I just do some slightly, I tweak some things slightly for Cora's hair. Cause like, like I said, Cora's hair is very wooly and um, tightly coiled, but Eva's hair, the coils are kind of looser and more defined. So guys, I'm done with Cora's hair. <laughs> you like your hair? Yes. Turn your back, let me see the back of your hair. Like I said, I'm not going for neatness, I'm going for health. Yeah, turn your front again. So, I'm actually going to bring earrings for her. Before this, her ear will, will, will block. Bring my earrings, just any one. Hello guys. So, I've uploaded my video, I've replied most of the comments that are there right now. So, I'm supposed to reply some as the time as time goes on. So, that's just to tell you behind the scenes of a YouTuber's life. It's not just filming the video, it's not just editing the video, it's not just uploading the video. It is also responding to comments, sharing your videos, checking your... In fact, it's a lot. It's a lot, okay? Anyway, so I want to fold my clothes. This clothes have been... My bed is a mess right now. I have clothes on my bed. Like... All the clothes I've been washing as I bring them out of the laundry, I just put them in one corner. Ba, one corner. Ba, one corner. One corner. <laughs> I just put all the clothes in one corner. So, yeah, um, let me just fold them today. Let, let, let me see Rhoda beg. Anyway, so, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, so today I remembered one story that it's funny that I don't really remember this story that much. Something that happened to me uh, when I was much younger, and for some reason it affected me more then than it affected me in my you know adult life, even though it had some implications in my adult life. Anyway, I'll explain what I mean now. Alright, so um I think it was I was in JS2 or JS3. I think I was in JS2. Or just three, one of those classes anyway anyway so during that long break that we usually have long um, holidays um, I went to stay with one of my cousins and my you know my uncle's wife not that is my cousin and my cousin's mom but the mom is my uncle's wife so I'm directly related to my uncle okay anyway so I went to stay with them or oh, you know I was very close to my cousin then people used to say we look alike you know, she was just like, she was my best friend, you know, in my head, though, she wasn't, and I'm saying in my head, God, wait till it's turned out later on, but in my head, she was my best, she was, in fact, she was even like my sister, you know, so I went to stay with them, I stayed with them for a few months, I think three or four months or something, anyway, so while I was with them, one night, one day, actually, just told us that we're going to have a pastor come to the house to pray, you know, so we're going to fast or something, I can't remember what the story was, because I was much younger, um, I think we had to fast that the guy would come and pray and stuff like that. You know, people that they used to call that they would say, um, you know, come and break the, every yoke in this compound and come and see. Let me 
disclaimer before we start i i'm not against prayer i'm not against getting people to pray for you okay but i still believe that at the end of the day your prayer counts the most okay you get other people to support your own prayer for like when your faith is low you know when you're really struggling you get other people to support your own prayer but it doesn't mean that their own prayer is more important than yours okay that's my own belief okay anybody can believe differently it doesn't matter who pastor bishop whoever you want to call because at the end of the day when christ came and died the curtain was torn so that everybody can come to the throne of grace and obtain mercy <laughs> okay so that anybody everybody anybody that wants to come to god will come to god by he, his or herself without any cutting you know preventing you without any you don't you don't need any middle mind don't need any priests you know to enter the holy of holies for you you can enter the holy of holies by yourself all you need is just to be willing to enter there okay so I don't believe that anybody's prayer is stronger than your own prayer. I don't believe it. But you can get people to come and pray with you just to, you know, support you with faith and, you know, strengthen you and all that. Anyway, so yeah, they called this man to come and pray and he was there praying, you know. We had like maybe a two hour, three hour session in the night. We'll just pray, pray, pray. You know, some people that will pray, 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 pray. And <laughs> another thing I have an issue with is people that pray with too much power. Like, I can get I get being passionate in prayer. I get being emotional in prayer. I get being, you know, really, you know, praying from your heart. I get it. What I don't get is when your prayer has formula, like the way you pray sounds, the way you sound when you pray sounds differently, okay? Because for me, if God is my father and I want to approach God as my father, so for instance, my earthly father here, I cannot go to my father and go and say, Daddy, give me money. <laughs> I need money. Uh -uh. That's if that's how you talk on a normal day, fine. But this, if that's not how you talk on a normal day, and that's how you are, you are you are choosing to approach your father, then there's something wrong. Okay, it means that your prayer. I don't know, but anyway, I've digressed a lot. So as I was saying, so the man was praying, 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 pray, 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 pray. Hey, me, I was like, what is going on? I want to sleep. It it went into the night, you know. I think it was like one a.m. or two a.m. It stayed for a very long time, so I wanted to sleep. Remember how this whole story went, but I know that I left where they were praying and I went inside. Um, then I came to meet me. That what am I doing here? I think my auntie came to meet me. That what am I doing here? I know that my tummy is turning me, blah 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 blah. Um, so then I said I should, I should um, come out and pray. So when I came out, um, I think they told the pastor that the reason why I went inside was because my tummy was spinning me. So that was how this pastor now started praying, praying, praying. Now called me that I should come that in my tummy there are snakes that are eating up the eggs in my tummy you guys just listen though there are snakes that are eating up the eggs in my tummy you know that i need to pray against it that we all need to pray everybody i said pray 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 hey jesus jesus everybody i mean as a young child i wasn't scared that's something that is, is even odd now that i'm thinking back someone telling me that kind of thing i wasn't scared i didn't even really believe it like i was just like mm, there's a snake in my tummy oh god I, I, I want to sleep <laughs> okay yeah, but people say i pray oh jesus this one that one that one that one hmm. so that was how the whole thing ended though imagine imagine living with that stigma i don't want to call it stigma but living with that knowledge and everybody around you too has the same knowledge that there's a snake in your tummy it's not the eggs in your tummy okay because snake eats eggs so the snake in my tummy was eating eggs anyway so i lived with it for a while after that whole thing happened but i didn't even tell my parents that's even the funny part i didn't tell my parents because to be honest after that incident it didn't really i didn't think like i said i wasn't scared and i really did not believe it okay i think it was my auntie that now went to can tell my parents as per hey see what our pastor has found out about your daughter anyway so now it's got tell my parents my parents said Ta! Can't rubbish with that. <laughs> my father said never. He's not. He's not his child. My mom said it cannot happen in this house. It is not. Forget those people. Forget what they are saying. What do you mean, a uh, pastor saw snake in your tummy? I beg. I remember my parents were really strong. They said, I beg. What's mean of that one? Which one the snake is in your tummy? Okay, that is not true. Okay, they kept telling me that it's not true. I mean, I mean, I know it's not true. To be honest, I didn't believe it. Okay. So after that whole period, I think one day, that same period, I went to the village for something. 
we went to the pool to went to the river to swim we used to go and swim in the river a lot we went to the river to swim we stayed a lot in the cold you know every i really spent time outside and you know village during christmas period is usually cold sometimes you know and imagine now staying inside water and coming out so i was really cold so i was just feeling like my tummy was cold so that's when i thought about it that, huh, that they say that snakes are cold though why is my tummy cold? Maybe it's this snake that's making my tummy cold. Chai, chai, chai. You know what? You know what pisses me off? Anytime I remember this story, okay, or when I see things like this happen in people's lives, a lot of times all these so-called prophecies that people are hearing is just the devil that is instilling in you fear, that is putting the wrong ideas in your head, that is trying to get you by putting fear because it is your fear that your devil that the devil is going to use to defeat you. Okay, if you want to start once you start getting afraid of things, that was the devil used to defeat you, you know, because the devil doesn't really have power to defeat you, especially if you are born again. The devil doesn't have the power to defeat you. It is your own power that you will not give to him to use and defeat you. And that power and the way you give the power to the devil is by becoming afraid, okay? So when he now when I told my uncle and I told him, remember that and I said, hey, maybe it's the cool thing. I remember telling my cousin, my cousin laughed at me. <laughs> Another cousin of mine in the village, she laughed and laughed. She said, and what I say? So there's snake now. There's snake moving your tummy like this now. So where, where's, where's your stomach? I remember the shot asking me, where's your rib? And I said, my rib is here. And I said, okay, where's your tummy? I said, this is my tummy. She said, so where is the snake? And I said, maybe it's inside here. Yeah. <laughs> so she laughed at me. She said, I bet you're not sticking your tummy, Joe. So that was it. Then I was still very childish. So yeah, but after that, after that incident, I stopped, you know, remembering it. Yeah, I forgot about it. Now, fast forward forward several years later <laughs> many years later when i was going through my infertility journey to be honest i never i didn't think about it throughout like for years i didn't think about it it was just one day that i, was, I think i was sleeping or so or maybe i was awake i was just thinking you know those kind of person just thinking about your life you know trying to think about you know your situation something just occurred to me what if the reason why you are infertile is because all those snakes have it's not the eggs in your tummy i'm just telling you all this so people will know how the devil works okay because imagine if that man had never told me that thing i won't even draw that association and for and to be honest for and for a very long time i didn't even try to think about it that way in fact it didn't even occur to, i didn't even remember the gist that's to tell you the truth i didn't remember the gist okay so yeah but the day i remembered it I quickly said, God forbid, that is not true. It can never happen. There's no snake in my tummy, whether spiritual or physical. There's no snake in my tummy. My eggs are intact. I mean, I've, I've gone for several scams and they, they had told me you have enough eggs. In fact, at some point, I produced more than enough eggs because they gave me a, a an ovulation inducing um, drug. Okay? So when they gave me that ovulation inducing drug, when I went for um, scan, they told me that I, I produced so many eggs. In fact, if I had gotten pregnant at that period maybe i've had multiple children okay so th there are no eggs missing in my tummy <laughs> there are no eggs missing but the devil wanted to come and try and now tell me hi why didn't you believe the man no maybe if you had believed the man it would have not happened to you i said pah beg it out god forbid i know i prayed against it immediately okay and that was it so i said all this to say this if you're a kind of person that's always going to one pastor, one prophet to the other to pray for you, to hear for you, to see for you, stop it, okay? Stop it. God has given you the power to, you know, make changes in your life, okay? The power of death and life are in your tongue. The power has been given to you. Okay, when Christ died on the cross, he died on the cross, he went to hell, he defeated Satan, and he got the keys to the kingdom, and he gave it to you, okay? So you have the power over your life. Don't allow any pastor come and say, I know it's about all these, all these prophets, all these ending our fools on. They always fools on, but they have no solution. They never, ever have a solution. They will tell you, bring this, bring that, pray this day, pray that one, bring some amount of money, eh, do that one, do that one. They always have a perceived solution but if you check it at the end of the day they never actually solve anybody's problem they never actually heal anybody that's why people keep going to them over and over again just to go and hear we want to hear oh you're going to you can't miss them um i want to marry this man they'll tell you bring his pictures when you bring people they'll tell you this is not the man for you this one is the man for you you will not choose based on that you won't use your common sense you won't use your own holy spirit that's inside you to guide you you will not choose based on that or um uh 
ah, I drank this gym yesterday and I don't tell you it is your mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law does not want you to progress. Your father-in-law does not this one, that one. Your, your cousin, your village, that grandma in your village, there is... See, I want to have a about a lot of prophecies. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just saying this from my own perspective. I'm not saying it, it doesn't work for other people. If it works for you, fine. But I'm saying from my own perspective, I have realized that what they do is guess work. Guess work okay they do guesswork and then you supply the remaining answers they will tell you things like is there an old woman that lives close to your compound in the village please tell me who does not have any old woman living close to their compound in the village uh, is your village uh, uh, was your, is your village the village of children <laughs> who doesn't have any old woman living in your compound so when they tell that kind of thing you will not say Hey, there's this woman. No, oh, I know how we to associate old age with, with witchcraft. I don't know why. I don't know. See, Nollywood has spoiled so many things in this world. Nollywood, you see that Nollywood, they have spoiled so many things. They have spoiled the image of Nigerians. They have spoiled the image of Igbo people for, for uh, especially in Nigeria. You see Nollywood, and it's unfortunate because Nollywood is actually ruled by mostly Igbo, so it's very very unfortunate. Okay, but even the Yoruba Nollywood too, <laughs> the Yoruba people Nollywood too, they do a lot of diabolical things. I see that's all we do in Nigeria. Okay, so. When you see someone that is old that is just doing her own thing, maybe it's kind of woman that will not really laugh too much and she's just minding her own business. It was just the reason why she's not happy for us is because she's a witch. So when I tell you that the reason why that money that was supposed to come did not come is because of that old woman in your village, you will not say, I knew it. Yes, there's an old woman in my village. Her name is this, her name is that. The man will not tell you, ah, that, yes, that woman is the one that is against your life. Pray against it. Pray, fire, 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 fire. At the end of the day, money will still not come. At the end of the day, things will not still get better for you. At the end of the day, you are still going from pillar to post. You are still going from one seer to the other seer. If someone dies, there is always someone that killed someone. Nobody dies of natural causes in Nigeria. Nobody dies of natural causes in Nigeria. It's always somebody. Somebody killed him. Okay? I can agree that somebody killed him if maybe the somebody prevented him from taking his drugs when he was taking his drugs or from living a healthy lifestyle or from eating the right thing or from, you know, stop not smoking or from, you know, not exercising. I can't believe. But if it's that the person said something somewhere and the person and then that your family member then fell down and died, it's a lie. It does not work like that. If not, most of us would have been falling and been dying since, okay? A lot of us, you do think you're the only one that they used to target, okay? You think Dangote, Dangote does not have black people in his village, he doesn't have old people in his village, he doesn't have people that are, that are envying him, he doesn't have people that are against him, he doesn't have enemies. Is that what you think? You think Dangote does not have enemies, why is he still making progress, okay? So at the end of the day, it's what you fear the most that comes upon you, okay? It is your fear that this so called pro. Um, Profits are feeding on and then manufacturing information for you and then you start working on that information before you know what's happening That wrong information that they gave you now starts affecting your life because you have internalized it You have envisioned it you have imagined it and I, I like I said in my last video I believe so much in the power of imagination whatever you consume your mind with whatever you attract it Okay, whatever you are thinking of or to yourself you are going to attract it to your life So you are the witch you are, you are your village person you you are your village person But you don't want to believe it's you that is that old woman in your village <laughs> I don't know why I got so passionate talking about this topic chat Anyway, you don't know how I still had my two children. If I want to even have more children, in fact, now I'm not the one preventing pregnancy. <laughs> to be honest, when my IUD fell out, I said, Ah, you people will not catch me. You people want my IUD to fall out so that I will now. <laughs> no, people are not going to catch me, okay? So, yeah, um, yeah, I think I'm going to end this vlog. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I've talked too much. So, all I'm trying to say is this, okay? You have equal access to God. Nobody, nobody has more access to God than you. Okay? You have equal access to God. If you ask him anything in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ, and it is in accordance with his will, you are going to have it as long as you believe in your heart. That what you ask for, you have it. You are going to have it. Okay, no weapon formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. If you believe that, then nothing will prosper. But if you don't believe it, then it will prosper. Okay? So it's as, it's as simple, but not as simple, okay? It's easy to say this, but sometimes, like I said, even as I, as I had so much faith, and I said, I didn't, be, I didn't even believe the story when the thing was told to me. That's just the truth. I didn't believe the story. But you can see how 
just having that information still crept up at different times in my life okay through the courses of my of, of through the course of my life okay even today the thought still crept up and the thought did not crop up today not now that i feel like there's a snake there but i just remembered it again that someone actually said this about me me hey me next thing in my life is not that it's not that eventful i've actually had a lot of crazy things happen to me okay anyway i hope you guys like this video so this is just my typical day Thank you guys so much for watching. Please ignore this thing here. It's jig that cost it and bleach. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.